CineStill is using motion picture film for your still camera. Is it any good? I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks. Everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus, rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Here we have Tri-X once again in blue, Cinestill in red. Now the thing with Cinestill is they are not shy about advertising or admitting rather that this is Kodak Double X 5022 movie stock. So Double X camera film back in the day was a 200 speed. They rate this at 250, so a third of a stop faster. Um, I would say it's still a 200 speed film, but 250 is well within the uh, exposure latitude that this film can provide. What we see different than, say, the T-Max films is that we have a definite toe, so that sloping smooth toe down at the bottom, and then we don't have much of a straight line so much as a gentle arc throughout the rest of the range and then a clear shouldering at the top. Now the shoulder means that we're not going to have much separation in our highlights, but in the real world we'll have to look and see once we look at the prints to see if those highlights actually block up or not. So let's go ahead and look at the prints. But looking at the curve, we have a nice traditional uh, slope 
and curve that you would get from an older film. So let's look at the prints and see what it really looks like. Triax 400, Cinestill 250. Now, Cinestill, as we said before, is just a Kodak film. Cinestill does not hide that fact. They call it double X, which is what Kodak calls it. I believe it is 5022, and it is a movie stock film. What we would have is what I would call a typical Kodak appearance. There is almost exactly the same tonality, almost exactly the same contrast. We certainly have the same spectral response for both. It is basically Tri-X, but a little bit slower. Now, this is exposed at 250 uh, ISO, just as the box says. Uh, so I feel like you are getting true box speed with this. Uh, I have not looked to see what Kodak actually rates it, though I do feel like uh, I remember seeing 250 on their tech sheets. Original double X was a 200 speed film, but this is not original double X. This is the movie stock and it's a little bit different. Okay, so since everything here looks pretty close to that one, then we're going to go ahead and zoom in. Now, on your screens, it may look a little contrastier, or at least a little higher contrast here than on the Tri-X. Looking at the prints on the actual table, yeah, I would say it is maybe just a little hotter here, but just barely. When we look at them closer, I think you'll see that the difference is not nearly as much as it looks like on the table. All right, looking at our grain side by side, we can see that there isn't really a whole lot of difference. It is a little bit finer, not quite as fine as say a 100 speed film, like our Plus X or a T-Max 100, but it's still pretty good, nice and sharp, we do have good tonality. We have good shadow separation, particularly right in here where these fine hairs are coming in, but not like T-Max 400 where we were getting a little bit of a highlight pickup there because we do have pretty much a traditional toe on our slope. Looking at this portion side by side, we can see we do have fairly good gradation coming from the shadow to the highlight of the shirt. Again, we have nice fine detail here and a pretty good example in the smooth tone of the background of that grain once again, looking sharp, relatively fine, and a pretty good performance. Here we see with the stitching on the collar and stitching down the shoulder that we are getting nice sharp detail. Uh, we're picking up the fine uh, hairs on my throat, my chin, sprouting up from my shirt in all of its hairy chest glory. We have pretty good detail. And here we can see in the forehead and the bridge of the nose, the cheek of these highlight areas, that's not nearly as bright and hot as it might appear on screen in the wide view. Uh, we're getting pretty good gradation. We're getting nice contrast. Uh, I would say this is actually probably a nicer highlight uh, development time than I was getting with the Tri-X. Uh, through all of these comparisons, I do feel like the Tri-X was maybe a touch underdeveloped, but here we can see, I think, what the true potential of Kodak films can be. It's a pretty good film. I like it very much. Uh, not necessarily going to shoot a lot. If I were going to shoot it a lot more, I'd probably buy it in bulk and roll it myself because I find Cinestill, it's just a little bit overpriced for what you can get. Otherwise, it's a pretty good film. Uh, it has excellent performance, good sharpness, nice grain, and excellent gradation. So even though it's a movie stock film, technically, it's still a perfectly good still camera film. All right, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.